Welcome back to another episode here of Worlds Collide. I'm the kid JW. That's Starbucks over there. What's up, y'all? And this is coming <laughs> from Dorbel. Life after school be like. I don't know what school he go to that looks like a prison, but that reminds me of Cedar Point dorms, but let's run it. You know, they say ramen noodles is a food for poor college kids, but they never mention that you'll be poor very much past college. As you are fresh out of high school, they expect you to be prepared for everything they decided not to teach you about, such as... Alright, before we proceed with the loan, we must check your credit score. Wait, yo, what is a credit score? Hold up. Well, you see, we need to check your credit worthiness if we are going to give you a bank loan. You're trying to tell me this is going to dictate my whole future potential of being able to get loans and stuff and being able to get a house? And they didn't bother to tell me about this once during school? And you know we can't forget about how they pushed the huge decision of going to college or McDonald's. I mean, you're a naive 18-year-old who's often more interested in the college experience than the outcome. So this is often how that college discussion goes. So why do you actually want to go to college? Oh well, you see, I, I want the college experience. So by saying you want the college experience, pretty much you're saying you want to smash people, your financial life, and very well your internal organs will add it. Uh, well, no, but, yeah, can- I can say this. I went to college. Three colleges, I think. My brain's fried from college. And I can honestly say this. Everything I learned in college did, in fact, prepare me for the real world. It taught me how to handle my liquor, how to not wake up with hangovers, how to do greens, and function on a least amount of sleep and ha and survive on with a stressful schedule. So college did help me. Not financially, destroyed me financially, but life skills that did teach me. A win's a win. Exactly. Yeah. Also, it's wild to me because all your life you've been told where to go and what to do until one day there's like, all right, bro, make a life for yourself. And from my perspective, if you keep listening to others, your life's just often gonna go like this. Coming to bed, honey? Yes, dear. And you know when you're younger, you imagine your 20s to be the time of exploration and fun, but you forgot something. You're broke. And this really does lead me to my biggest pet peeve. Self-exploration and finding yourself is the most cringe thing in the sense of how it usually is used. This is most of the time how people mean it. Hey, watch me down this shit right now, let's go! Hey, hey, y'all come, y'all come home with me? <laughs> no, fuck. Oh my fucking head, bro. I, I regret this. And with this newfound independence, often comes with a crushing realization of who's fucking up your life for you. Oh my gosh, bro, my life is going to shit. Why do they keep doing this to me? It's fucking me. It always has been. Oh no, how could this be? And as a child, you are saw with limitless potential. But once you're in your 20s, those fuck-ups are just a little bit less cute. So as a kid, you wanted to be an adult. But then once you're an adult, you figure out you were definitely wrong and you want to be a kid again. Oh boy, I can't wait to be an adult. One eternity later. I wanna die. I'm gonna drink myself to sleep another night. Also, as an American, you know I can't forget about the fact that certain drugs become legal once you hit 21. And crazily enough, they're all relatively mind-numbing party drugs, but that's just besides the point. But usually once you turn 21, it becomes a whole lot less interesting since you were probably doing it before then anyways. But even though it's legal, when you buy it for your first time, you're still just a little bit nervous on it. I don't know if this happened to anybody else, but I was definitely that person who's like, yeah, I finally got my license, I'm 21, and I got my proof, right? Go to the liquor store. Pick out what I want. Boom. He tells me the price. Like, so you're not going to ask me for my ID? Nah, you look old enough. You're a, first off, you're a woman with assets, so. But and you in the I, hood. So I hood, look, it, uh, hood shut liquor up. stores. It has nothing to do with it. Yes, it does. Uh, and I wasn't in the hood. Where were you at? Not in the hood. Where were you anyway, at? Anyway, what I'm saying is, I'm sitting up here like, 
you not you not gonna answer my ID. You look old enough. Like I've been waiting for this moment for twenty one years. I'm here to tell y'all this. When it comes to liquor stores and women getting their IDs, it's just like us who worked at retail back in the day. If you look old enough and you got the assets, we're not gonna check your ID. We're simply not. Unless you're like Carol or something at the party store, then yeah, they're going to check your ID. Carol or Timothy, then yeah, they're going to check your ID. But if you're with Ishma and whatnot, then no, they're not going to check your ID. Whatever. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll, t I'll take one vodka. <clears throat> all right, all right. I'm going to need to see your ID, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here it is. Uh, all right, that will be the 2135. 12 o'clock midnight. Skirt, skirt, skirt. And with social media, it's easier than ever to see where people from your class have landed, and I've noticed the older I get, the farther that separation gets. So we're going to do a quick breakdown between people who made the wrong choices after school versus people who made the right choices. And this very well could be a little brutal, so take this with a grain of salt since this is a generalization and each individual has a unique story. So here we have the people who messed around for all their 20s and indulged in stupid and unhealthy life choices. And while they may have had some good stories, oftentimes they have more than the stories to show for it, such as unplanned children, single parenthood, and possibly a disease or two. And quite likely have aged prematurely since alcohol and drugs can do that for you. And now we have the people who made the right choices, and be aware that no one makes the right choices all the time. For example, I sold Dogecoin at a fraction of a cent, and if I sold it at the peak of 64 cents, your boy would have been retired now. It keeps me awake at night. Anyways, the right choices would be things such as avoiding clubs and parties, since oftentimes it's just not a great place to meet people. I'll use a college party I went to as an example. Yo, sorry, I can't let you in. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I know you from class, don't I? Yes sir, that's me. I didn't actually know him. Oh, come on in. And within five minutes of me being there, this happened. Hey, you can fuck me if you want. And of course I did not take that offer. My type generally has morals and self-awareness. And another few minutes later, college security shows up and we all disperse. Anyways, back to the right choices, such as working out. I wish I started sooner so I could be pushing my natural peak at my age of 23. And you know we can't forget how much things have changed in recent times. Back way in the day, when people were in their early adulthood, their main thing that they had going on was a family, buying a house, getting a career set up with a company that's going to promote them throughout time and actually treat them well. But now we have this thing where people just don't have relationships, they don't have friends, they don't have family, they don't have a job that respects them, and they just don't have a lot. We've become very selfish as a whole, and it's honestly, it's a little scary. All right, uh, let me go find a job. Let me go throw on a tie and walk into that business and go get it. Ah, right, nice to meet you, sir. Hey, I'm looking for a job, and I heard this is where I can find one. Oh, you're hired. You want the CEO position? And you know I would be lying if I was to say I don't miss summer break. It just feels much more imprisoning because instead of having that big gap of time off to recover and all that, instead you're going non-stop throughout the whole year. Hey, Bill, what you gonna do for this summer? Yeah, I feel like one of those kids, they definitely took summer break for granted. I miss them myself. I didn't because my summer break was spent working, do, doing yard work, learning how to cut grass, learning how to change tires, spark plugs, cleaning and building stuff. So I don't, I don't miss anything. But I will say this, I cherish my night. But see, I know what weekends are meant to be, which is for relaxation. So I'm built for it. I still hate, still hate doing it. But I understand. No days off now since summer break. Break. Yo, J Joe, you, you do realize we're, we're adults. We... we we're gonna work every morning every single day besides that couple days for the weekend though and on those uh i'll have a beer and with all the rising costs we have going on with housing price food prices gas prices it's getting very hard to be a young adult even paying for rent is relatively expensive one of my friends was telling me how he had to move out because his rent was going up to 1800 a month for a one bedroom apartment it's getting crazy out there. All right, so the lease agreement, just sign right there. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Does, does that say 
if, if, if I can't afford to pay, you, you'll take my kidney? Yes, sir, sign it right now or else you're going to the streets where you belong. And the living for the weekend effect, honestly, to me, is kind of depressing. Even though the majority of people do it, I think the fact that you have to exist just for a couple days a week seems to be really just weird to me because you're only living two out of seven days a week. And I think that's kind of odd. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little weird for thinking that, but two out of seven, that's not a lot of days to live, especially when you sleep for at least one third of your day. Or should I say, you should be sleeping for a third of your day. Let's be honest, most people don't do that because there ain't enough time in the day to be getting proper sleep. Anyways, depending on your choices after school, you're... Yeah, but even still, it's still kind of weird. Still not enough sleep that the body's supposed to be getting. Go to bed at 2, wake up at 9, whole day is good. Rinse, repeat, you're phenomenal. Mm. Life really can be a dream or a nightmare. Comment the realizations you've made since graduating and feel free to click this video right here. I mean, what has changed? <laughs> Life after school. I agree. Huh, well, that's it on this episode. I ain't gonna say. I feel more depressed than whatnot now. But, uh, that's shocking. Yeah, it's just really like, I don't know if it's real. But hey, I'm going to say... Because he literally talked about how life is right now? Yeah, um, of course it's boring. So yeah, links where you can find this and uh, Doorbell's other videos and content will be in the description below. Um, you want to take us out? I was, and then you started doing my job. Yeah, well, finish the rest. <laughs> as always, Collider, if you enjoyed this reaction, go ahead and hit the like button, share with someone who you think would like it as well. If you're not already a Collider, I don't know why you're not subscribing. It's free. That button is around here somewhere. Click it. We're coming back with more. Let us know in the comments how you enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more content from Durable, the links will be in the description below, along with where you can follow me and official JW on our own perspective platforms. And you have nothing else to add. So bye, y'all.